really like it. 50 cents, sir, please. Right. Silhouette cut for 50 cents. Satisfied, mister? Yes, yes, very good. Nice. All right, next, please. Sorry. There you are, Inspector. Thank you, Dr. Ordway. Did he look like a man fresh from a killing? I don't know what a man fresh from a killing is supposed to look like. Who does? <laughs> well, here we are. This is a strange place for a girl to live alone, isn't it? Silhouette Cutter has a room down the hall. Elaine Stewart lived here. She's an artist model. The body's gone. Otherwise, everything's just as we found it. Where's, uh, where's her, her purse? Headquarters. Oh. She had $200 in traveler's checks, $30 in currency. But what I wanted to show you is this. Oh. Let's see that silhouette I made with it. The edges of the newspaper are more ragged. Two silhouettes weren't cut with the same scissors. I know they weren't. We found the scissors that cut that silhouette. She was stabbed with them. Now, Ordway, I asked you to come down here because it looks... <laughs> looks like there's a psychological angle to it. And being a psychiatrist, I thought you might be able to help me. You don't think then it was the man on the corner? No. I don't believe she knew him. I don't believe she knew anybody in town. How long has she lived here? Got in from San Francisco this morning, moved in here this noon, and was murdered about 8 o'clock tonight. Those are sketches of her. Did she come here alone? As far as we know. Of course, she could have met that silhouette artist in the hall, talked to him, and asked him in. Yeah, he might idly cut a silhouette of her, but why would he kill her? He claims he didn't even know anybody moved in. Well, I'm afraid I can't tell you anything that helps. And the fact that the murderer cut a silhouette of his victim? If, if he did. I didn't expect you to. Well, Not offhand. Wait, I'm just going to take the newspaper. Oh, we have pictures of it. Oh. Uh... It's not a bad likeness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're doing the routine things. Maybe we'll crack it that way. I just want to get you thinking on it in case we didn't. Right. Dr. Ordway? A couple of blocks down the street. I'll get mine and drive you down. Oh, no, never mind. I just soon walk. If I get any ideas, I'll phone you. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Start coming in the house again. Uh, you let me know, won't you? Oh, very well. Goodbye, Dr. Broadway. Goodbye, Miss Crothers. Goodbye. 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 There's a Mr. Lake, Clive Lake, outside. He hasn't an appointment, but he's very insistent. Did he say who sent him? Nobody. Send him in. Yes, Doctor. Mr. Lake? Yes. I've seen you before. Well, I've got a good memory for faces. I remember it was uh, down near Helene Stewart's studio soon after she was murdered last night. Well, I thought I had a right to be there. Why, of course you did. I live near there. I, I've got a studio on the Davis block. Oh, are you an artist? Yes. So that's how you came to know Helene? Well, I never knew her. I'd never even heard of her until last night. I was just walking around. Tell me. You recall seeing me last night? Yes, I, I've wanted to consult you for some time, but well, I always lost my nerve at the last minute. When I recognized you on the street last night, I was going to ask for an appointment. Come on over and sit down. Pull up this chair. 
Tell me, uh, why do you want to see me? I, well, don't be afraid. Go on. Well, Dr. Ordway, I have lapses of memory, blank spaces in my mind that I can't fill in. You mean you can't remember things that happened sometime in the past, or is it just recent events you can't recall? Recent events? Like, well, like something that happened last night. Have you been in the service? I mean, uh, overseas? No, I was rejected. Is it a serious mental condition, Doctor? No. It's more common than you probably realize. Uh, tell me, do you know what you do during these blank intervals? How could I? Well, haven't you ever discussed it with your family or, or friends? I try to avoid talking about it. Can you recall the first time you were aware of a lapse in memory? Yes, I... I was about five years old. My mother had locked me in a closet for punishment. Some emergency arose and I was forgotten. I was in there for three hours. Well, it was rather convenient for getting an experience like that. Well, lately the lapses have been coming more frequently and they... they extend over longer periods. I'm getting so that about the only thing I can remember is my work. Are you a commercial artist? Certainly not. I'm a fine artist. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you sell most of your work? No, I, I'm unknown, and the, the good galleries like Malone's won't handle my paintings. I know Mr. Malone slightly. I'll tell you what you do. Take something up to him in the morning, the best thing you've done. I think he'll handle it. And come back at 2 o'clock on Thursday, and we'll have a long talk. Oh, Dr. Ordway, is there any danger to, well, to others in my mental lapses? The thoughts of doing things and then not knowing anything about it, it it's ghastly. Do you have any warning before these attacks? Yes, I, I feel a pain, like a headache. My home number's on here. Now, the next time you feel a forewarning, you telephone me, whether it's day or night. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ordway. I'll take a painting up to Malone's in the morning. That's fine. Good day, sir. Oh, how do you do? Mr. Malone? Yes. My secretary telephoned. Uh, oh, yes, you're Dr. Ordway. Yeah. Yes. I want to uh, talk to you about something that's rather important to me. Go ahead. Uh, I have a young patient, Clive Lake, who is an artist. Yes, I saw some of his paintings recently. Oh, does he have any talent? I'll explain that. I'm a psychiatrist, and if I'm going to be help to him, I... Yes, yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, I think he has talent, yes. He ought to be earning a hundred a week as a commercial artist, and no time. Well, then you'd say he has limited possibilities as a fine artist. Exactly, yes. I wouldn't care to handle his work. Uh, I'm going to ask you to exhibit one of his paintings. I couldn't consider that, Doctor. You see, when my clients point to a painting as coming from the Malone Galleries, well, I want it to reflect credit on me as well as on their judgment. Yes, well, I appreciate your position. Uh, but this may be the... Saving of a man's sanity. Now, Lake will bring a painting in the morning. Oh, you don't have to actually hang it, just accept it. Then in a day or two, report back that you've sold it for $200. Here's the 200 Now, you'll, you'll be aiding in an experiment, Mr. Malone. But I never sell a picture under 500 Yes, well, we all make exceptions to such rules at times, don't we? Please take it. Are all your treatments as quick out as this, Doctor? <laughs> Hardly, but... Uh, small measure of success in his chosen work will do a lot for young Lake. I want to help him. Well, I think you're wasting your money. The boy's got to face reality sooner or later, you know. I know, but I hope to prepare him for that. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Malone. That's quite all right. Good day. Good day to you. This is Clive Lake, Dr. Ordway. Could you possibly come down to my studio right away? Studio D. Yes, I, I think so. Thanks. Now, head just a little higher and tilt it. 
That's right. Do you feel ill, Clive? Oh, I'll be all right. I think I'll go up on the roof and get a little fresh air. Take your hat and coat, Clive. You might catch cold. Huh? Oh. You will come back for the party, won't you? Yes, of course. There wouldn't have been any party without you. It was the model and not the painting that sold that picture. Now you're fishing. But I won't tell you I think you're good. <laughs> Thanks. You feel all right, don't you, Clive? Oh, yes. Uh, I'll see you later. Is that you, Clive? Joe, you don't stay still. Very good. Thank you. Excuse me. Is there something wrong? Dr. Ordway, I telephoned you a while ago to tell you I was all right, but you've left. Well, you look fine. Thanks. Oh, excuse me. Marie, this is Dr. Ordway. Marie? Would you excuse us? We'd like to talk. Come in the other room where we can hear it. I've had the most astounding piece of luck. Malone sold my painting. Splendid. And it's the rule of this madhouse. If you sell anything, you've got to throw a party. <laughs> Why, darling? We have to finish our dance. Dr. Ordway, what shall I do? I'll wait for you inside. Thanks. I'll be right in.
That's a beautiful music. I love it. I love it. Come on, that's that. More, more. I think just talking to you has helped. The attack didn't last long tonight. You thought I was coming on when you phoned. That was a few minutes before 8. Well, I... Excuse me. I went blank right after that. I thought I'd go up to the roof for some fresh air, and well, that's the last I remember. What time did you come out of it? About 20 after 8. And when I came to, I was right outside my door. <laughs> Dr. Ordway, I sure appreciate your coming down here. Oh, it's all right. Mmm! Marvelous. Oh, here I get. <laughs> Who's that? Dr. Ordway. Oh, the crime doctor. How appropriate. I admit Lake's story is vague, but I think... He, he has no story. That's the reason I think he's telling the truth. It's obvious that the killer came in through that skylight. Still might have been Lake. Could have come in that way to make it look like an outside killing. What have you got there? A silhouette artist was cutting it when I first got here. Another paper doll. Another model murdered. Oh, no, there's no mystery to this one. There were a dozen people here when he cut it. What's up? Well, oh, thanks. Isn't there any way of penetrating Lake's defenses? You mean getting at the blank place in his memory? Mm. Want some wine? Thanks. If he'll cooperate, I can induce him to recall everything he did, saw, or heard during his blackout. Why shouldn't he cooperate? Unless he knows he's guilty. Oh, I don't think jail's a good place for that. I'll turn him loose as soon as I get back to headquarters. He's only being held for questioning. You want to be present when I talk to Lake? You know I do. All right, you'll hear from me in the morning. Good night. I'm leaving with you. Oh.
I'll never forgive you for letting that key slip out of your fingers. Why didn't you bring it to me? I intended to give it to you this morning. I didn't recognize it as a safe deposit key until I got home. Then I, well, I realized it's an importance, and I put it under my pillow. Didn't it have an initial or any mark on it to identify the bank? No, nothing but the number. Do you think it was Lake who broke into your house? I don't know. I'm going to see Lake now. Well, if he agrees to let you experiment with him, remember, I want to be present. All right, say, have you turned up anything that Helene and Connie had in common, in no. addition to being models? Only that they both came from San Francisco. You'll find Lake at Duval's studio. I hope you get something out of him. There's no apparent motive for these murders. Well, I'll call you after I've talked to Lake. So long. Gently, all come is in there. Shut up, Nick. All is so friendly. Oh, the doctor. Come in, come in, doctor. Thanks. Glad to see you. <laughs> uh, you. You better be careful of him, my Nick. He's a mental specialist. <laughs> you may rest. This is Nick Petroni, Doctor. I have painted him as a pirate, an Arab, a priest, a prince and a pauper. I am Nick's favorite artist because I paint only male characters. Oh, yeah. How do you do, Doctor? <laughs> How do you do, Nick? How are you? Uh, tell Dr. Ardway how many paintings you have posed for. Nick. Oh, Dr. Ardway is not interested in that. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. I have posed for more than a thousand paintings. Must be some sort of a record. It is. Oh, yes. Nick is the most famous model in the world. And what does it mean? Nothing. Now, there is no work for me. The women get it all. You mean the artists paint uh, mostly girls, huh? Exactly. They don't want to paint character. They don't know how. All they can paint is the body of shallow, empty-headed females. Excuse me, doctor. <laughs> Come around here, doctor, and take a look at my work. Oh, thanks. Uh, not today. Some other time. Oh, when? Oh. Well, when this business is all over, I came up here to see Lake. He doesn't seem to be around. Oh, he went to his mother's. Oh, do you, do you know where she lives? Oh, you better not go there, my friend. Why not? I, I've got to see Lake. Well, the address is uh, 2209 Wesley Drive. Oh, thanks. Uh, you see, she's his worst enemy. But the police frightened him, so he ran to her. Stupid fellows. They should know that Lake didn't kill Connie. Who do you think killed her? I have a tip you might pass on to your friends at headquarters. Tell them to look for an imbecile. For if this killer had any brains, he would murder the artist, not the mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, doctor. <laughs> How do you do? Dr. Ordway calling on Mr. Clive Lake. Uh, Mr. Lake is not here. Well, then tell Mrs. Wellington Lake I'm calling. You might mention that I came to return his son's diary. I'm Clive's mother. What is it you want? How do you do, Mrs. Lake? I came to give Clive his diary. So give it to me. Oh, no, a diary is very personal. I prefer to hand it to Clive myself. He's ill. Then I should see him at once. I'm his doctor, you know. You can't see him. And you'll give me that book before I call the... The police? My boy is too upset to see anyone. You can't help him, Dr. Ordway. In other words, now that you've got him back, you intend to keep him. Yes, for his own protection. Why are you afraid to let me see him? Attorneys have advised against it. We 
naturally are aware of what happened in his studio last night. Did you discuss his intended marriage to Connie with the attorneys? He'd never have married her. There's only one thing that stopped him, the fear that he was going insane. But her murder has conveniently removed the danger of her getting any of your son's money, hasn't it? Are you daring to accuse me of having that girl killed? <laughs> I'm dreadfully upset this morning. Would you sit down? Clive told me about you. It was kind of you to come. I didn't know that he'd written a diary. Would you please give it to me? No, uh, there are things in it you wouldn't enjoy reading. You know, of course, that my poor boy is not well mentally. When things got too turbulent for him as a child, his, his subconscious opened a refuge for him. A form of self-hypnosis, you might call it, but it was habit-forming. Otherwise, he's as, he's as sane as anyone. You are my boy's enemy. His most dangerous enemy. His enemy? He killed that model. That's why he came back to his mother last night. Did he tell you so? My attorneys are looking for specialists who will testify that Clive is not sane. That's his only hope. Do you mind? Send for Clive, will you? This is Ordway, Inspector. I'm at the home of uh, Clive Lake's mother, 2209 Wesley Drive. Right. Yeah. Just as soon as you can get here. Goodbye. You'll gain nothing by bringing the police here. Clive is going to tell us exactly what happened last night. I shall forbid him to talk to anyone. Why don't you take the chains off that boy? Let him live his own life. Because he is mentally incompetent. I'm afraid that's wishful thinking. If it's the money you're worrying about, you can forget that. Clive doesn't want the fortune his father left him. You can have full use of it during your lifetime. He says so right here in the diary. Now send for him, will you? Or Inspector Dawes gets the diary. You're asleep now, Clive. But I want you to talk to me. No matter how much you're tempted, no one is to speak because if he's startled or frightened, he'll wake up. When I awaken you, Clive, you you won't remember anything that you've said. I'm... I'm hoping Clive will name the murderer. Sometimes when you don't feel well, you go up to the roof above your studio for a walk. You went there last night, do you remember? Yes. Did you see anyone in the corridor when you left your studio? Yes. Was there someone you know? It was to Val. Did you stop and talk to him? No. Then you went into the closet and up to the roof. Yes. What did you see up there? Nothing at first. I was worried about Connie, wondering if it would be right to ask her to marry me. Then I saw Duval. He walked across the roof and looked around for a minute. And then he seemed to disappear. Is there another way down from the roof? No. But I saw Duval after a while. He was coming from the roof of the next building. I watched him go to the edge of the roof above my studio. He climbed over the parapet and went down the ladder beside my skylight. Suddenly, I realized... Connie! Steady. Steady. You're all right now. You're all right. You're all right. Look here, look. How did you ever get the idea into your head that, that you might have killed Connie? Well, I, I guess it came to me at headquarters. You said that if I couldn't remember what I'd done at the time Connie was killed, that I couldn't be sure that I wasn't guilty. I want you to stay at my home for a while now, Clive. The boy needs to go away for a long rest. Our attorneys have found just the place for you, Clive. Yes, Clive, and it's a very lovely place. You have a mild case of transient amnesia. 
I think it can be cured quickly if you'll put yourself completely in my care. Mrs. Wellington Lake has made other arrangements for her son's care. Mm -hmm. They're going to put you into an institution, Clive. Will you please leave, Dr. Ordway? You forced yourself in here in the first place. I'll be glad to. You're over 21. You can make your own choice. These attorneys can't force you into an asylum. Why? Well, I... I'm going with Dr. Ordway. I'll never make any trouble about father's estate. You can have it as long as you live. Goodbye, mother. Well, don't stand there gawking. What are you going to do? Well, there's nothing much we can do. If you turn one of these rooms into a studio and let the boy dabble with his art here as we advise, he'd never have met that model. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Lake. But you'll have to come to headquarters with me. Do you mean you're arresting him? I don't believe the story of what happened on the roof. Why, surely you know it's impossible for anyone to lie while hypnotized. But how do I know he was hypnotized? Anyway, I want him at headquarters to face Duval. Wait. Leave Clyde with me. You can question him any time you like. Even his own mother believes he's guilty. That's why she was so anxious to get him in a sanitarium. If we arrested him from there, his defense of insanity would be half one. All right, Clyde, go ahead. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Ordway. I'd like to see Mr. Malone if he's in. He's in his office. You make a ride in, Dr. Ordway. Thank That's you. right over there. All right. Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Ordway. I was in the neighborhood. I thought I might as well pick up my painting. I've just written to you. I was about to mail it. There's my check for the 200 you gave me. Why, I don't understand. You gave Lake the money. Not your money, I didn't, no. A legitimate buyer came in before I got a chance of hanging Lake's picture and gave me 200 for it. Well, then, Lake does have some talent, huh? Well, I intended giving Lake your 200 after his picture had been hanging for a few days, but uh, I can't tell you how relieved I am that I shall not have to display it in my own galleries. Uh-huh. Who was the buyer? Come over and sit down a minute. I've never seen the man before. He walked in, noticed Lake's painting against the wall on the floor, and asked the price. Did he know Lake? No, I quoted him a price of $200, and without even asking the artist's name or anything about his reputation, he said he'd take it. Well, of course he could see Lake's signature on it. No, no, he never got close enough to that. Didn't you get his name? I asked him where we could send the painting, and he said that he'd be back in an hour with the money, and that he'd take it himself. Of course, I never thought I'd see him again, but uh, he turned up in an hour with the money. Well, didn't he ask for a bill of sale or, or a receipt? No, he bought it as I might have bought a pound of cheese. Perhaps your customer was more interested in the model than in the painting. Well, you know, that didn't occur to me until this morning when I picked up the paper and I saw a photo of the model. I read about her murder. Mm -hmm. I think perhaps you're right. What was he like? I don't know. The only eccentric thing about him was the way he bought that painting. No, I mean uh, physically. Oh, physically. Well, he was around 40 or 45 and dressed rather shabbily to suggest rather that he was indifferent to clothes than that he was poor. <laughs> you know uh, Duval, of course. Oh, yes, that eccentric fellow. He's a bitter man, but a good artist. Mm. Do you know his model, Nick Petroni? I mean, by sight? No, I don't know. Why would a man buy an oil painting in the morning and murder the model who posed for it that night? What? <laughs> oh, I was just thinking out loud. Well, thanks for your check, Mr. Malone. Not at all. Well, I'm going to have to report your customer to the police. Oh, don't worry to do that. I'll do it. I didn't know it was so important. Yes, it is. Perhaps you'd like to drop around some other time and have a look at my pictures, eh? Thanks, I will. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's rather late, Dr. Ordway. Yes, I know. I'll order you a few minutes. There you are. Thank you. Well, how are they treating you? Clive, don't you remember me? Are you someone my mother sent? What? 
Tell her I won't talk to you. I want to be left alone. Your mother didn't send me. She doesn't want you to see me. Don't you remember coming to my office? Now think hard. I never saw you before. You know where you are? I'm in jail. But it's, it's just some mix-up. See, and the jailer says that I... I killed some girl. Some girl named Connie. But... But I never even heard of her. She was your model. You painted her. You're an artist, Clive. Oh, I, I always wanted to be an artist. But my, my mother, she was opposed to it. You are an artist. Don't you remember your studio? Don't you remember Duval and, and Nick and Jimmy Gordon who cut silhouettes on the corner? You know these people. The reason you forget them now is because they're associated with your trouble. You can't solve your problems by running away into a dream world. Please go away. I don't understand you. Turnkey. Yeah? Call Inspector Dawes, will you? And ask him to come up here right away. Yes, sir. You're going to be all right, Clive. You're going into a sound sleep now. Sound sleep. 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 Wake up, Clive. Wake up. Wake up. You're in my home with me, and you're going to stay here until you're completely well. Wake up. Wake up. I had one of my attacks, didn't I? We won't talk about that now. How did you persuade Inspector Dawes to let you bring me here? Duval's disappearance puts a different light on the case. Tell me. Did Connie and Helene know each other in San Francisco? Yes, they did. Did they correspond? Did uh, Connie know that Helene was coming to town? I don't think so. Well, they posed together once for Arthur Berry. It was a painting called uh, mm, The Ring. There was a third girl in it, too. Did Connie ever mention her name? Well, if she did, I, I don't remember it. Find yourself something to read her. Go to sleep if you want to. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Good night, Dr. Good night. Boy. Thanks a lot. I want uh, Dr. Ford A. Booth in San Francisco. That's right. Hobart 21632. Uh, Dr. Ordway calling. Thank you. I don't pass. I shall bid a no Trump. No Trump, eh? Let me see here. Pardon me, sir. Dr. Sorry. Booth, there's a long distance call from a Dr. Ordway. Ordway, huh? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Ordway. Well, where are you? I'm at home. How are you, Dr. Booth? Hey, I, I hate to bother you like this. I wonder if you happen to know a San Francisco artist by the name of Arthur Berry. Oh, yes, yes. We belong to the same club. Uh, what if you can get a little information from him? I want to know what became of her. Uh, who bought a painting that he did a couple of years ago called The Ring? Uh huh? Now, there were, there were three models used in that picture. Two of them I know by name, Connie Mace and Helene Stewart. I want to know uh, the name of the third and if she's still in San Francisco. Yeah, I'll try to get a hold of Barry, and uh, when I do, I'll call you back. Right. Now then. Good evening. Oh, 
Oh, who do you name? Uh, come in. Come in. I'm uh, Dr. Ordway. No, oh, I see. Then you'll be wanting to look at some of the paintings, I presume? Well, to talk about them. Oh. Yes, uh, about one of Arthur Berry's paintings, to be specific. Mm. I see you have a, a fine appreciation of the arts, Doctor. <laughs> Arthur Berry. Ah, oh, a superb painter. Yes, yes. I'm interested in one he did called The Ring. I just heard from a friend in San Francisco that you bought it. The Ring? Yeah. Oh, yes. I remember that well. Oh, yes, sir. That was an inspired piece of work. Three lovely lasses admiring an engagement ring. Yes, that's it. Do you still have it? No, no, I, I sold it. Oh, who's the buyer, Mr. McPherson? Well, it was purchased by a gentleman named Stanley Gregg. Mm -hmm. Do you know where I could locate him? Well, probably. Mind you, only say probably, heaven. But, uh, I hear my doots. You mean he's dead? Well, if he's not dead, they certainly wasted a pretty penny on a lovely funeral. Do you know where I could find the painting? No, no, you see, everything was auctioned off, scattered to the four winds. And you know the painting? Well, Barry's went for a song. You see, I happened to be very ill at the time, a touch of influenza. I couldn't start out of the shop. Well, when I heard the price that that picture brought, do you know, sir, that I had a very serious relapse? You said so. Oh, yes. But, uh, I happen to have some uh, others of Barry's with you? No, no, I'm only interested in the one called The Ring. I believe it may have been the motive for the murders of those two models. A painting involved with a murder? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Inhuman man, cursed be thy barbarous art, and blasted be thy murder-aiming eye. May never pity soothe thee with a sigh, or ever pleasure glad thy cruel heart. Uh, Bobby Burns. Ah, <laughs> uh, Bobby. Bobby had a word for everything. Yes. Do you think that the uh, auctioneer might have a record of the buyer? Well, now, just a moment, Doctor. Are you wanting just to have a look at the painting? Oh, no, no. I'll buy it if you can find it. Well, uh, now, uh, let me tell you that the, uh, the original price was uh, 500. Well, that's all right. Bid up to that if you have to. Then the picture is practically yours, Doctor. I'll ferret it out if I had to go to the ends of the earth. <laughs> well, I'm afraid there's hardly time to go that far. Oh, uh, by the way, Doctor, you're, uh, you're not asking any other dealer to look for the picture. Oh, no. No, of course not. Then put your mind at rest. Macpherson will not fail you. You are now shaking hands with a man who would swim to Glasgow for a shilling. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Thank you very much. Oh, Goodbye. Oh, I will have my wee joke, Doctor. <laughs> Sorry if I made you nervous. What do you want? I'm trying to locate Deval. I thought maybe you might know where he was. That's funny. The police are looking for him, too. I don't know where he is. Uh, do you know where I can find Nick? Yeah, down at Pancho's. Thanks. <laughs> This I disturbance just... is nothing, sir. It happens once a week, regularly. Oh, well, I was going to say, I just came in to see Nick. Oh, very good, sir. But at your own risk. 
Minaldi, Lebeur, Rosales have painted me. For 40 years I made a career of posing. Now you have no work for Nick. You must have women to pose for your pretty calendars. Artists, you call yourselves. Ah. What do you want? An interruption. Please excuse it. You are a man of intelligence and discrimination, Doctor. It will be a pleasure to dine with you. Thank you. Dinner for Mr. Petroli. Yes, sir. Do you suppose we could uh, persuade Mr. Duval to join us? Ah, there is an artist, a painter of character, a man who appreciates a professional model. Being a model to me is a career just as important as being an artist, is to Duval. But what is a model today? An odd job man, an athlete, a student, anybody from a park bench. I am different. I am... That is not what I order. As for these females who would take the bread from the mouth of an honest professional, they look better in the scullery where they belong. Ah, this is very good. Do I interest you, Doctor? Oh, you do, yes, immensely. In four languages, there are not enough words to express my hatred of these female models. Old Nick has only one friend. Duval, he's gone away. Where has he gone? I don't know. When did he leave? Immediately after the telephone call. There were a lot of talk. Then my friend picked up his hat and went. What time was the telephone call? Time? What is time? In all my life, I never owned a watch. I asked him, when will you be back? He said, who knows? For 40 years, I made a career of posing. 40 years. Well, goodbye, Nick. Goodbye, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Tell Mrs. Wellington Lake, Joseph Dewey is here. What's the matter, Mrs. Sleep? Wake her up. She'll see me all right and pay well for the privilege. Hurry! It concerns her son's life or death. I should convey your message to Mrs. Wellington Lake. Very well. You have to tell me about my son. First of all, madame, let me tell you, I'm here for money. And I'm so confident of your generosity that I'm planning living in luxury the rest of my life. What insolence! Nevertheless, madame, you'll pay. of the guilty one. You're lying. Oh, madame. Then you don't consider your son's life worth a sacrifice. Perhaps you would like to be rid of him. Do you think I can be blackmailed? Oh, good morning, Dr. Ordway. Good morning, Clyde. Come on, sit down. Thanks. I'm afraid I'm putting you to a lot of trouble. Oh, not a bit of it. There's plenty of room here. Besides, Jose doesn't like cooking for just one. <laughs> <laughs> Will you have a coffee now or with your breakfast? With my breakfast, thanks. Yeah. I'm just waiting around for a telephone call. Oh. Oh, did you uh, read about Duval? Yes, Jose brought the paper up to my room. Mm -hmm. 
It's hard to believe he's dead. He was always so vital. Yeah, I know, but he was blackmailing him. That's a dangerous game. He had $1,000 in bills in his pocket. He'd gone to your mother to get more. Oh, there's a call. Excuse me. Broadway speaking. Hi. Hello. Uh, hello, Dr. Booth. I got some information on the third model in Barry's painting. Her name is uh, Evelyn Harris. And she left San Francisco about a year ago, headed for your town. Do you, uh, do you have her address? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know the name of the man she's supposed to have married? All right. Well, anyway, thanks ever so much. Yeah, I will. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Clive, did, uh, did you ever hear of a model named Evelyn Harris? No, I, I don't think so. Connie ever mention her? No. Well, that's strange. <laughs> because Evelyn Harris was the third model in Barry's painting. Well, they, they could have worked together once without ever having become close friends. Well, she was in town. She came here about a year ago and was supposed to have married. I, I never heard any of the artists or other models speak of her. Well, maybe, maybe she got married right away and didn't even work here. Artist models, they drift around, don't they? Some of them. What's the first thing they do uh, on arriving in a city? Well, they, they go to the art schools and to dealers to register for work and to find a place to live. Uh-huh. Say, I wonder if you'd mind phoning Inspector Dawes for me. Ask him to have someone go through the records and find out who married Evelyn Harris. Oh, yes, of course. I, I'd be glad to. I believe Evelyn Harris was murdered by the man she married. Then when Helene Stewart came to town looking for Evelyn, he killed her to prevent an investigation. Then he discovered that Connie, who had also posed in Barry's painting, was here. Oh, I see what you mean. He, he was afraid that Connie might be dangerous to him, so he killed her too. I'm convinced that when we know who married Evelyn Harris, we'll know the murderer. Don't forget to phone the inspector for me. Sure. Hello, hello, Mr. McPherson. I don't expect you to have any results yet. I just dropped in. I want to ask you a question. Well, Doctor, fire away with your question. When you've done, I am going to amaze you. Yeah? <laughs> Tell me, did you sell a thousand dollars worth of Duval's paintings? Yet? Oh, away with you, no, Doctor. No, no, I didn't think it was likely. <laughs> no, Duval was in here yesterday, but he had no money. He purchased some tempera colors and brushes and had them charged up. Oh. I didn't know he worked in watercolors. Well, no more did I. As a matter of fact, he's often expressed his disapproval of the medium. And when I made a comment on his unusual purchases, oh, he got quite indignant he did. and told me to mind my own business. Yeah. <laughs> well, that reminds me. He bought some watercolors and brushes, then he disappeared for eight or ten hours. Then he reappeared with a thousand dollars in his pocket. Does that make any sense to you? Well, of course, it might for a special assignment, but, uh, oh, no, not for a thousand dollars. No, but if the uh, s assignment was something illegal, uh, such as what, Mr. McPherson? Lost, Doctor. I believe you have it. You see, a stolen oil painting might be covered over with a watercolor, a kind of a quick disguise, you see. Then later on, they could wash away the watercolor, and the original picture will be left there undamaged. Splendid. <laughs> now, what about this amazing news you have for me? Jimmy Gordon has your picture. Jimmy Gordon? Yes, you know the lad that does the silhouettes I in the corner. I know him, yes. Oh, I had quite a job uh, finding it out, but he has it. Huh? Uh, the former owner, Mr. James Trevor, gave it to him as a present. Now, I'm going to approach him with your offer. Wonderful. But never a mind about the offer. You just send me a bill oh. for your commission. Oh, but wait a moment, Doctor. Oh, no, no, now, wait a minute, Doctor. I would like oh, to do something on. else. Oh, well, if you insist, I'll take the money.
man. I'm getting sick of you hanging around my corner. What do you want with me? I'm looking for an oil painting. Are these the only pictures you own? I don't even own those. Somebody left them here. What about uh, Arthur Barry's painting called The Ring? What? I said, what about Barry's painting, The Ring? Oh, yeah. Yeah, somebody made me for that one. You mean it was stolen? That's what I said. Mm -hmm. When? Six, seven months ago. I was working on a fresco for Mr. Trevor. He picked it up cheap at a sale. His wife didn't like it, so he gave it to me. Where was it stolen from? Right here. Did you recognize Helene as one of the models in the painting when she was murdered in the next studio? No. Now you mention it, I guess she was. You knew Connie, eh? You were at the party the night she was killed. Listen, I'd only had that painting a few days. I scarcely looked at it. In any case, there's nothing very funny about a model being in a painting, is there? Does that have anything to do with her getting killed? She does get killed? In this case? Yes. The next time you come, bring a search warrant. I will. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Malone in? Yes, he's in his office. I'm sure it's all right for you to go right in. Thank you. Mr. Malone? Dr. Roadway, how are you? Fine, thanks. Good. Well, I didn't know you were an artist. Oh, all dealers are frustrated, you know, <laughs> one kind or another. <laughs> yeah, say, I was shocked to read of DeVal's murder the other day. Yeah. Yes, I called to see if you could help with something that might have a bearing on it. Did you ever hear of a model named Evelyn Harris? Evelyn Harris? Offhand, no, I didn't, but uh, let's look in my office. looking for models and models looking for work often contact each other through dealers. Mm. I don't remember this girl Evelyn Harris, but maybe she left her name and address. She was a friend of the two dead models, but she seems to have disappeared. I don't remember hearing of her, but have you canvassed the Davis block? Someone there might know of her. No, no, I haven't. But I'll pass that suggestion along to the police. Have they found out anything more about the buyer of the lake painting? No. No, I don't think so. No, there doesn't seem to be anything here. I'll ask one or two artists about Evelyn Harris. All right, thanks.
Unfortunately for you, Dr. Rodway, you're just a little too clever. You told me you didn't know Evelyn Harris. But I see you were familiar enough with her to model her in wax. I was married to her. That's what I thought. I suppose I should apologize for the unconventional way I dropped in on Mrs. Malone. But after all, it's a fair return for your visit to my bedroom. I should have killed you then. But it saved me the trouble of getting rid of your body. You'll manage that all right. You've had experience in moving a body out of here. Or did you bury your wife under her statue after you murdered her? I didn't murder her. A month after we were married, she said it had been a mistake. I couldn't let her go out of my life. So I begged her to let me model her before she went away. Paper doll? No. She suffocated when I was making a mask of her face. If it was an accident, why didn't you report her death? Oh, they'd never have believed me. Besides, they'd have taken me away from her. So you spend hours here reveling in her beauty, talking to her and fancying you'll hear her answers. Well, that's all, Audrey. Come out of there, away from Evelyn. You made a great mistake. You all right, Ordway? Yes, fortunately. Take him away. Well, thanks for saving me from a bad night. <laughs> you can thank Lake for that. We found the record of Evelyn's marriage to Malone, went over to the apartment to question him. When he wasn't there, Lake suggested we come over here. Oh. See you later. All right. Clive. Clive. Hmm? Don't you get interested in sculpture. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>